Hello, pod friends, and welcome back to another episode of Wait For It, Wait For It, Wait For It, Pod Friends. I'm your host, Matt Scott, and I am thrilled to be here back with you to have candid conversations with people in this RHAP community who I hope that we'll all get to better know by the end of each and every one of these episodes. So last week's episode was with T-Bird. I hope that you loved it. It's been great already seeing feedback and the love for T-Bird. And I am thrilled for you to hear from none other than really my friend, Grace Leader, who is part of this community, part of the class of 2020 in RHAP. And more than anything else, has probably covered like more podcasts and topics than a lot of people in RHAP. And this was one of the things that I really appreciated going into this conversation with Grace is that even last week when I previewed, previewed the episode, like there was so much I left out that she's talked about and focused on. She's the host of the Off Speed podcast, uh, which is more focused on sports here on RHAP. She is the co-host of the Hold Up podcast with Hudson, Has is the host creator, really, of The Pride Has Spoken, which Evie Jagoda and I are part of. She has hosted multiple Taskmaster games, and I've been able to podcast with her about games like Black Widow Brigade. Shout out to Alex Gardner, um, who is the creator of Black Widow Brigade and Survivor Philadelphia. But also um, a lot of you know shows that dive into some more serious and queer topics like Heartstopper and Euphoria and Pose, and the list goes on and on. And so I had to have that all listed out to remember. But I think the thing that I love most about this conversation with Grace that I realized in real time is Grace is such a member of the community. And I think a lot of what she shares about her journey, not only did it resonate with me, but I think for a lot of folks who are listening, you'll probably hopefully be able to see yourselves in Grace where, you know, none of us are just one thing. Like Grace isn't just trans. Grace isn't just... Um, someone living with type 1 diabetes, Grace isn't just, you know, all of these other things that we might other, you know, have other people define us by. I think Grace really shatters this idea that we could only be one thing and that we're only identified by one thing. And there's so much complexity in each and every one of us. Um, but the other thing that Grace really shows is just like why this community, why these shows, these podcasts, and the conversations we could have around them um, matter so much to each of us, even personally, um, when it comes to our mental health and wellness and our growth and everything else. And so I loved this conversation with Grace. I adore Grace. And um, there's so much to dive into. But before diving in with Grace, I just want to say that um, I hope that you are subscribed to the podcast, robhasawebsite.com slash podfriendsfeed. And I hope above all else, you know, there are lots of things I could encourage you to do, but check out the show notes because that's where you could figure out where to follow Grace, where to follow me, where to connect with pod friends on social media, on email. One of the things I want to plug this week is that you could nominate a guest. And if you haven't done that already, or even if you have, go to bit.ly slash podfriendsnom. That's bit.ly slash podfriendsnom in order to... Um, in order to nominate someone who you want to hear from in this RHAP community. Those have been insanely helpful to me as I've built out the guest list for this summer of pod friends. I didn't, didn't even realize that was going to be the summer of pod friends, but I guess it's the summer of pod friends. Move over, big brother. And uh, just on top of all that, just want to encourage you to leave some reviews and especially to tweet me at Matt Scott GW, tweet me at Hey Pod Friends, um, tweet the link to this episode out, sharing is caring, let the people know what you're thinking and how this story resonates with you, how Grace's story resonates with you. So thank you so much, everyone. But uh, without further ado, I want to dive into the conversation with Grace. So <clears throat> making their way to the podcast, hailing from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You know them from the Offspeed Podcast, the Hold Up Podcast, the Pride Has Spoken, and podcasts about Black Widow Brigade, Heartstopper, Euphoria, Pose, Pro Wrestling, 
and so, so, so much more. Please give a warm welcome to the gifted, gleeful, grounded, glistening, glorious, graceful, gracious, Grace Leader. And for a second, I thought, you know what? Maybe my first interview question is, Grace, how are we starting this podcast? But I mean, it could be. Uh, Conan Grace O'Brien Le- always does, um, like, uh, uh, the guests will always say, like, I'm Grace, and I feel blank about being Conan O'Brien's friend. And that's the beginning of every every episode. Do you want to do that? No, we can't steal Conan O'Brien's bit. Why not? Is he ever going to listen to this? No, like, he's never going to listen not. to it. But Thanks, Grace, <gasps> for uh, rubbing it in. No, and... I'm saying you could, but what I'm saying is you could come up with your own thing. Every time I want to be creative with a pod, and then I'm like... What if I just do it the exact way everybody's done pods forever? <laughs> I feel like this is, well, you know what? It's it's interesting because you have so many different podcasts and you've done so, you've had so many different podcasts that I feel like, so I feel like like the good news of this is I'm not nervous, but the mm-hmm. bad news is I don't know where to start because That's true. I'm just like, you know what, Grace, how about you start out this podcast and just, you mean just start? I'm Matt Scott, and is that what you wanted? Sure. Mm. No, I or don't you know. could do yourself. Like, I mean, you could be Grace. Mm. I, yeah, I've been Grace for like about five years now. I think five <laughs> years. Uh, it's been going pretty good. <laughs> oh my god, this is wild. Okay, wait. Let me look at my notes here. I'm yeah. like <laughs> I'm trying to get momentum into the podcast. It's good. Like, um... I think we're going somewhere. Mm-hmm. This actually might all be in the podcast. For okay. Know, so. Sure. I don't keep yeah, it. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's recording, so that's the point. Um, you know what, Grace? Maybe like this is the best place to start. Mm-hmm. You want to? You want to hear where the best place to start yeah. is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, actually, no. I've I have another way to start. Okay. So, Grace, if you were me, what question would you ask you to start the podcast? Um, I see. This is. Uh, I've said this a lot that I I feel like I'm very basic. I have very basic takes. So I feel like my answer would be. You start at the beginning, right? You start at the beginning. What, where's the beginning? Yeah, either the beginning of my life or the beginning of me podcasting, I think, is the beginning, right? Well, that's a good point. What's your birthday, Grace? Oh. You don't have to give us like your, you know, I'll give your you social me. security I don't number care. and everything. I, but yeah, August 25th, 1991 as a Sunday. Uh, yeah. What time? Um, I think like the morning. I can. Never, I asked my mom once. So I don't really uh. I was born 10, 18 a.m. So were you born like 10? I hope you were born at the same exact time. That would be cool. Are you um, looking it up? Do you have like a spreadsheet? My of all mom these messaged me, you? so I think oh. I could I could look up what time I was born. Uh, if I Mama Leader. My... Yeah, Mrs. Leader. She's principal. <laughs> Mrs. Leader. Mm-hmm. You're Mrs. Leader's baby girl. We yeah. love that. The, yes. Ugh, gosh. Uh, yeah. So one forty-seven in the afternoon. I lied. I was not a morning baby. I was a. Uh, I was an afternoon baby. Yeah. Interesting. Sunday yeah. afternoon. Just do you know how long your mom was in, was in labor or like you know? Mm, no, I don't know that one. Was it no. C-section or? No, or... I, don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't <laughs> think C-section. I don't think. Wow. <laughs> okay. But actually, the question I did think about related to start at the beginning is like mm-hmm. I'm not good at signs and like what people's signs are. Are you a person who's like tapped into your sign and that type of thing? Only my own, like other people will, t- like if somebody else is yeah. like, oh, I-, I could never be like, wow, that's so Aquarius of you. I have no idea. But for me. Are you an Aquarius? No, I'm a Virgo. See, you just completely threw me off there. What and does that mean? What does that say about you, though, that so you're a Virgo? The things that I often, so I'm not super into horoscope signs, but I, I think they're interesting. And I like, th- I like when people mm-hmm. are into them and then can explain them about me because I'm very egocentric. Um, yes, I and I. I do like when somebody, so the things that people have told me, like, oh, yeah, that's because you're a Virgo. I very much like routine. I don't really like change. I like things like orderly. Um, you've podcasted with me a, a yeah. bit. You will notice that, like, yeah. I'm 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 very rarely late. So I don't really like uh, to you're be late. You're always early. I'm always early. I'm like one of those, like, if you're not early, you're late type people. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I would message you. If I'm running late, it's like I'm two minutes late. I'll still say Hey, I'm running yeah. late. Um, I don't like things changing last minute. I like them like everything in its little box and neat and organized. I love rules, um, huh. which mm-hmm. I think my mom being a principal like might have helped with that. But like it's a, re- a lot of the things I love are 
very rule structured. So sports and competition reality shows and board games. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons has a ton of rules. These are things that I like because you have structure within the thing that you're playing and enjoying. And I really like that. Do yeah. you have like a personal set of rules? Like do you like do you have like a are you like the David Bloomberg of um, this Pod Friends episode? Because it kind of sounds like it. Do you know what? I kind of do have rules in terms of like I mean, uh, you know, I live with type one diabetes, but I do so this is like helpful for that. But I do like to eat at the same time every day. I often eat for at least for breakfast. I very I often eat the same thing um for breakfast. I am someone who like very much sticks by like you're not really supposed to eat like chocolate or candy or or have like a pop uh, in the morning. Yeah. Like you have to wait for the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't mind a breakfast for dinner, but I'm very much like those are lunch foods and those are dinner foods. You know, this is like, these are the rules in which I sort of live my life. Yeah. This is fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just visiting my nephew like a few days ago and he's three and a half and we were playing and he has like this ice cream toy set. And I was, it was the morning and I was just like, mm, I love ice cream. Give me more ice cream. He's uh -huh. like, you can't have that. That'll make your tummy hurt. And yeah. I feel like you two would get along. He's I think a we little would. bit of a, he's a little bit of a, a stickler if you ask I, me, not as fun as you. I, th I think a thing people might not know, but I am, I am, ex I think one of my best talents in the entire world. Uh, and I always think this may sound weird. I am very, uh -oh. very good at entertaining children. Um, like oh. Supremely good at entertaining children. Uh, I worked at summer camp for a very long time. Uh -huh. I have most of my best bits are bits that will work on children. Um, I just, it's just the thing I think I'm very good at. And I, I, I used to work at summer camp. I don't work at summer camp anymore. We've been in yeah. COVID, so I can't even volunteer. So I don't see a lot of children other than my nieces and nephews. Um, but I would happily entertain like a group of, uh, I once was asked to come and just be the entertainment at a 10 year old's birthday party because, <laughs> uh, these were kids who came to camp and their parents were like, you just cut, like, we don't need to hire a clown or like a Disney princess. If right. you could just come and organize games for our kids and just hang out with them, that would be great. So I'll do things like, you know, sometimes yeah. Matt's, I'm sorry on this podcast, I'm going to wix up my merds. Sorry, I'm gonna mix up my words. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah, you don't want to know what just happened to my yeah. brain right there. Yeah. That was, uh, that was my favorite lunchtime. Food. This would be a lunchtime food I put in the lunchtime category would be chilled grease. I'm sorry, yeah. grilled cheese. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa. See, <laughs> see? are you yeah. a stand up comedian and we didn't know it? Only for children. I think I could be an excellent children's stand up comedian. So I will yeah. say, one of the I for whatever reason, I have an enduring memory, I think, from you on the renap taskmaster podcast mm -hmm. you know because there are people doing their tasks and you and rob are casually talking and i the feel banter. like rob said to you like grace do you do improv and you're like no i've never done improv and i'm like grace you literally are constantly doing improv like that's <laughs> yeah, what pod the podcasts yeah that's, are. that's true it's like uh i feel like the more the more i've been podcasting the more i've been uh you know in uh, the rehab community and the psr community the more that like I think it's it's maybe not great how much people will see how my brain works. The best example of like a <laughs> bit that I can't turn off is this oh, no. one that I've I've accepted Josh Wiggler's brain on, which is so say like someone's having computer issues, like I can't hear it, and, like oh you have to turn it turn it up to max volume and say like, mm -hmm. who is max volume. Um, and so the first one ever I think on my computer I know the first one ever I think Josh was saying like oh like I'm gonna play copyright music, don't sue me. I said who's sue, uh, and so. Once you see it, you just mm -hmm. can't turn your brain off from seeing it. But I feel yeah. like people are getting an insight into my brain is always sort of like looking for the way to like make a joke work or to like work things back mm -hmm. around. Um, if I'm not like kind of maybe being serious and even then uh, yeah. I feel like I'm I'm almost halfway into like improv joke mode uh, all the time. So I think it's a very good observation um, that like I'm kind of constantly doing improv. I think. Well, that's thank fair. you. That's that's wow. actually lived rent free in my head for wow. months and months and months and months. So wow. I'm glad that I could let it out. But you know what? OK, we're going to come back to the summer camp thing. We're going to come back to yeah. the games. We're going to come back to um, just all of that in a second. Mm -hmm. But I do want to point out to you. So I had a form asking people, like, who do you want to see on Pod Friends? And you were actually one of the most requested people oh. on this. And I'm, I have some of the comments because one person oh. said, Grace is so quick, witty, and funny. And wait, hold on. Let me read this again in the way okay. that I like to emphasize because they were all caps. Yeah, do Grace it. is so quick, witty, and funny. 
and she's Canadian. That's true. Mm -hmm. That is true. Someone else said, I love her brain. She's so quick. So witty. I don't, these are different people who submitted this, by the okay. way. So quick, so witty. I'm incredibly curious about her engagement involvement with post show recaps and REJP. Also, mm -hmm. now curious about the sports podcasting that you do. And then yep. someone else mentioned wanting to know. So you have a lot of fans out there. That's, I, I very much appreciate it. I was, you know, I was a very, very shy child. And mm -hmm. I think that where my brain, like the reason my brain works in this way is I'm, I'm constantly watching. Um, my coworkers would Ooh. tell me uh, that they would sort of delight in the, the idea that I would normally come into work and I would say, they would go, uh, so who did you see on the subway today? And then I would explain like, oh, there was, yeah, I saw this like incredible person on the subway today um, that was just like, you know, did something kind of weird or had something like, weird. What's an example of that? Well, so my, my favorite one that I would normally tell is one day there was, uh, there's a daycare on the way on the streetcar to work and all mm -hmm. of these kids got on the streetcar, like lined up like a single file. And as they were all in the aisle and on the, on the streetcar ready to go, the like driver, like jammed on the, like, you know, started the thing and they all fell over like dominoes and they were all okay. Sorry. They were all fine. Oh, well, I assume that's why I laughed. Yes, they're all great. And it's just like, I just like watching people. And I was a very quiet child. I'm I'm one of four children. I have three brothers. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very quiet as a, as a kid. It really wasn't until I went to summer camp that I became much more like out of my shell. Um, and so I feel like I watched people a lot. I like watch and observed. Um, I watch a lot of media and, 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 you know, I love being up to date with culture. So I feel like I'm sort of was like taking everything in. And then now that like, I feel like, I feel so like honored that anybody would want to like listen to me um, mm -hmm. and like hang out with me and, and choose to like click on a podcast that I'm on for like an hour and a half um, and listen to me. Um, but I feel like I'm getting to like use all of my watching ability and then like get to actually regurgitate stuff mm -hmm. out that I think you know, I've always thought I, like selfish. I do think I'm very funny. I think that a lot of the people I grew up with. Um, I gravitated towards people who have very similar senses of humor. My brother, Drew, my best friend, uh, we have very similar senses of humor. And it's like my mom hates uh, us being together in the same room because we're oh just gosh. doing that thing where we're like watching and waiting for you to say something like kind of wrong and for us to like jump on it and make a joke out of that thing. Um, I don't know. And I, I think also like, my childhood was like, I'm very privileged. There's a lot of ways in which I had a lot of privilege. We were like very much like a middle to upper class family, but we also had a fair amount of turmoil. I have a, a brother who has addiction issues. I have a brother who mm -hmm. uh, has went to, to prison. And so I feel like I, I've, I've, my therapist has helped me realize that I don't always need to be funny, but, but yeah. humor was certainly a thing that like, I just felt like instead of being sad, why don't we try to be funny? And sometimes that was like suppressing sadness which is like yeah. is a pro is a problem i think i've now figured out like there are times where i can be sad and I, it's okay to be sad or serious or angry or whatever but i still devote i think much of my time and life wanting things to be fun and funny um because that's how that's what i want to do with my life i think yeah it's so fascinating because you just said a lot there yeah, was a, a lot things. in what you just said yeah. and i was like you know what Throw out the notes. Throw out the, <laughs> throw out the notes. Wait, hold on. I have more utensils to throw. I don't throw know why you away. you started a podcast with a bunch of you were going to interview a bunch of people who love talking, and so like, I feel like uh, trying to like have interview <laughs> questions and notes for these podcasts might be a little bit futile for you, man. Well, but it's you're doing funny a great because job I so I never yeah. thank you. I appreciate that. I never really stick to the questions, or I like yeah. use them as a way of saying here's what we're gen generally going to talk about, and then I just go off off of there. I'm like, okay, at least you know, at least you're a little yeah, bit prepared yeah. but you know like there's so much there and i think well like let's uh start at the beginning as you would tell probably tell me to do mm -hmm. in terms of the organization the linearness of it yeah. like what were you kind of like growing growing up or what like oh. what was that like where did you grow up i know you grew up not in like toronto toronto nope. but like in a small town yeah. and i, what I was grew that? up about two hours maybe sometimes an hour and a half uh, north of toronto in uh, mm -hmm. a place called the city of kortha lakes specifically in a Ooh. village called woodville which is very very tiny um how like many people Probably like, uh, you know, I always remember the sign saying 600 people. I think they're probably closer to like 800, maybe a thousand now, but oh. very, very tiny. This yeah. is the type of place where like everybody knows everybody. Um, 
I was a very quiet kid. My mom uh, was a principal and for a little bit was like the um, sort of not a principal, uh, you know, worked at the school I grew up at. Um, I was, you know, that rule follower thing. That's very much me. Um, annoyingly so because my mom worked at the school, I'd often get good grades and then people would say it's only because mm. my mom worked at the school. So I was kind of relieved when she actually like I think I was in like grade five or six and she actually uh, became a vice principal and moved to a different school. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, but like super, super quiet. Um, there's a story my mom will tell where going from grade three to grade four in the Canadian public school system, at least in Ontario, you have to do a speech, a public speaking. It's to help yeah. kids. The number one fear of a lot of people is public speaking. So you pick a topic, you do a speech. And at the end of grade three, knowing that in grade four, I'd have to do a speech. I just told, I told my mom, I think I'm okay. I'll just stay in grade three forever. I don't need to graduate. I don't need to do a speech. Uh, so I was deathly afraid of doing a speech. Um, but also speeches were like, you know, uh, you like spoke about a topic and yeah. uh, you had to keep it within a time frame, whatever. I actually ended up being really good at speeches uh, and did them. Uh, I think I won every year from, except for my last year in elementary school. So I feel like podcasting in some ways like makes sense knowing that like I did like standing up in front of people um, and talking, but I grew up in this, you know, big household. There's four kids. Uh, yeah. I was the only one to not really play sports. Um, but when you are in one of four uh, boys in a family yeah. uh, in rural Ontario, you spend a lot of time at a hockey rink, whether you play hockey or not. Um, so a lot of my time was spent in, in hockey rinks growing up. So yeah. 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 That's like very fascinating. Look, I, this is kind of like a thing that's, that's going to be really interesting about this conversation because like you don't make it easy to interview you in the sense that there are like so many different directions. And I just I stopped, I just stopped earlier today and I was like, okay, well, we could talk about uh, sports, the, yeah. the, the, the sports, whatever those are. Uh, yes. There's pro wrestling, which we podcasted yeah. about together. Yes. Then there's this whole world of like queer representation with the yes. Hold Up podcast. By the time this comes out, people will know about the Pride Has Spoken. Uh, yes. There's also uh, uh, po the Pose podcast, Euphoria stuff. And then we there's did like Heartstopper. Heartstopper. Yep. Oh, I uh, see we did Heartstopper, this mm -hmm. general world of like scripted TV. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like this world of games. And so we could talk about Taskmaster. We could talk yeah. about uh Black Widow Brigade, which we podcasted yes. about. Shout out to Alex Gardner, creator. We are of on that. a reality TV network, you know. And then there's all yeah. the reality TV. Yeah. Or we could just go in the direction of Bond movies. And type or, one diabetes. We there's could so many there. things. Camp. We could talk yeah. about being tra you being trans. Yeah. We could talk about all the things. So, I I feel like something I'm like very curious about is like how did like what shaped you into that person who is obviously so curious about so many different topics and things, and uh, somehow finds time to talk about all wow. of them in a recorded format. Uh, I love culture. Um, I think that very so, culture, by the way. I'd say yeah. So. Um, some of these things are just like, I like things that make my brain tick in a way that like makes sense. And, and there's a lot of like parallels here. I was saying earlier that like, I think that like, you know, reality TV and, and specifically I'm much more like, if you notice the things I've been on, I'm much more likely to be on something where this is a competition and somebody's going to win and somebody's going to lose much right. more so than like the bachelor or the real world, which like, you know, I, I love that people love those shows. It's just not like what I am typically spending my, my time on. So, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that relates to games and sports. I think there's a way in which like, they're all rules based things, right? There's like a winner and a loser and you can like analyze be whether somebody can be good or bad at that thing. And I think like, if I like then extend to like the world of wrestling and like you know scripted tv um I, I i do like to be judgmental you know i'm talking about that i sit and watch a lot of things including like mm -hmm. people watching um but i you know the idea of like I, I studied history at university and i studied sociological like like society his, history where you know i did a lot of stuff about like you know things how we are as a society, specifically Canadian society. So like, why do parents choose to send their kids to summer camps? I'm interested in like why yeah. people do things. And so the thing for me about like wrestling and, and scripted TV that I think is really interesting is like, why do we watch these things? And then why do things become 
popular and why do other things not become popular? Why did Survivor blow up at the time? You know, it did. Why uh, did Lost become a phenomenon? Um, you know, Heartstopper, like, you know, it's yeah. this cute little LGBTQ show. And, I, you know, Hold Up was a lot about looking at like the way that uh, queerness was depicted in culture at like different times and seeing if it now holds up um, and like analyzing that and how it like reflects our society in a way. Um, I think wrestling uh, does that a yeah. lot. And it's, you know, it's also this athletic sport that I just, I was just drawn to it so much as a, a kid, this like showmanship uh, of it. Um, but, you know, and they're pretty clear stories as well, like good guy versus bad guy typically. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I like stories. I like, and I like thinking about how, all of this stuff like interacts with culture and society, which is why I think I'm drawn to like TV. And a lot of stuff I like end up watching is really like the movie podcast, Post Recap mm -hmm. Theater, I do with Ariel. We both sort of like at the time when COVID was a little bit different and things started opening back up, we could watch all the movies that were in theaters, like all of them. Um, like it was not, the, it's more than probably most people would go see, but it wasn't like there was an infinite number of movies. And so it felt like you could like have this grasp over what society was choosing to like put in our movie theaters and what people and again like what our society wants to see at the moment um in a way that was really interesting and because we were going to see a bunch of movies then we both end up being like you want to do a weekly movie podcast and josh wiggler handed us the keys to post your recaps theater mm -hmm. and the thing I, I still like about that i can't see everything now i feel like i'm like falling behind in yeah. some ways in terms of the amount of movies i can watch but i still like knowing like why is why did this get made and who is going to watch this thing you know um is it, really interesting to me yeah it's really interesting because i feel like in listening to you you are like such you know maybe more than potentially anyone i've interviewed so far you are like such an encapsulation of like this RHAP PSR world in terms of like when I think about all the people I've met who are patrons or who are community members, like we're all one, we, we we're all really into the shows we're into <laughs> and the things that yeah. we watch. And, but also I think we have an appreciation for these things that yeah. doesn't that other people don't have like it's survivor, for instance, like I've had con conversations with people even friends who are like, oh, I don't like Survivor. That's just a bunch of people lying to each other. And it's like, yeah. well, no, actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. There are a lot of social dynamics. And yeah. so, like so you mentioned, like the sociological aspects of things. And then pro wrestling is another one, obviously, where notoriously people will kind of uh demean or degrade or look down on it like and you know there's their pro wrestling has its reputation i'm sure even people hearing it now who are not wrestling fans will have certain connotations with that but then you Re know wrestling has this unique right. culture though where it's like yeah it, uh, this idea that it's real which is the thing that i think is always funny and people are like my brother used to tell me this all the time my one of my older brothers he'd be like you know it's fake right like like all the time i, I know you have told me it is fake so i know it's <laughs> fake and i'm still choosing to watch it but yeah. it has this very interesting it has its own culture around pro wrestling where there is this idea that like the lines between whether it's real or fake are constantly blurred in a mm. way that is is so interesting and so fascinating like i often like that's the thing you know you do have a podcast about it where you're like you're yeah. talking about more you know if it was just like was that a good match um, artistically was that a good match like that's one thing but there's also all of these like lines that are blurred and people are like some of the wrestlers are playing you know they're they it's their actual real name like i could mm -hmm. be a wrestler that's grace leader but then i'm like playing this character and how much of it is me you know, it's like, it's such an interesting thing that again, I think like, I, I'm, I'm a super overthinker as well, Matt. Uh, uh, well, if you I, haven't realized. Well, it's like, I, I know, the, I know this about you. <laughs> yes. I, I overthink everything. You and I, we're planning a podcast series and like, you know, the, yeah. my, my brain will sometimes be like five steps ahead from where like I'm even talking at the moment because I'm yeah. overthinking through every scenario and resolve. And I think that like, for me, that's like, that's where podcasts come into play is like, Oh, I can like watch Survivor and then think about it for, you know, seven yeah. more hours. I listen to Rob talk about Survivor for seven more hours, even though there's only like 45 minutes of content on the show. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's fascinating, though, because as an overthinker, you're also someone like I feel like some overthinkers do are not able to engage with a lot of content or a lot of different topics and things mm -hmm. and you know like i go back to your your um you just kind of setting up growing up and you mentioned like having a brother facing addiction issues and like mm -hmm. prison and these things and like 
even just starting there um and and then there's also like all the conversations that we've even had on podcasts on the pose pose podcast on heart stopper mm-hmm. probably on another billion podcasts i'm forgetting about where it's like about a lot of these heavy topics when it comes to queerness so you've mentioned like this fun light aspect of things but like how do you i don't know i'm almost like curious what your brain is like <laughs> when it comes to those like heavier things or how yeah. you navigate or negotiate those 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 things because it's a it's a lot like I would imagine that you've overthought those things as much as you overthink like everything else you know yeah yeah well uh I mean type 1 diabetes is another example like I feel like there's so much right (laughs) I I I've said this a lot on like the poster recap stuff I've been covering because a lot of the stuff has been it's been super super dark in in content like heart stopper is like the antithesis to most stuff I'm I've been covering on on poster recaps in the sense of like you know it's dealing with you know euphoria that I'm on I covered was like dealing with addiction uh, issues and trans issues and sexual assault and all of these like things that are like really like dark topics one of my favorite shows of all time is literally called dark uh it's a german Mm. netflix show it's incredible it's a sci-fi time traveling thriller that also is pretty like dark thematically like episode one and no no spoil like this is like the catalyst for the shows it starts with like the suicide of a father uh, death by suicide Mm. like i think that um for as much as i love being funny and i I, the way that like stuff that's like much darker in tone can make me think like i like you know the way my brain is working a million miles a second in terms of like figuring out the joke to make um I think happens like in spite of me really loving like to dive into something that's like pretty um, tough to deal with. And again, it's like, I'm so like drawn to media and culture in that, like um, it helps me, you know, make sense of some of the stuff that like in the feelings that like I went through is like, you know, I was like, so a few, I mean, a few things. So like, yeah, my brother, um, there were some years where he like tormented our family in terms of like his addiction issues. And then it's another yeah. brother who actually like ended up going to jail when he was 18. Yeah. And then I was, str- I got diagnosed with type one diabetes when I was 15 and really struggled with like the loneliness and being alone with that thing um, and, and being depressed. And then also like, you know, thinking I'm, I'm, Oh, I'm a, I'm a gay man. No, I'm actually, no, I'm actually like a trans woman, you know? And like the things I had to like navigate through that, I look to media for like norm, like feeling like those are normal feelings to have had during all of those yeah. things like euphoria tackled i think you know the addiction actually the addiction stuff and the trans stuff like some of the best stuff i've ever seen on on tv and so yeah. like to get to see it and sit and be like yeah like i'm i'm it sounds silly to feel like i'm relating to other people like through media but i'm like relating to the world and like, connecting to the world yeah. through all this media i'm watching and then also to get to do it by like talking through it with other people on podcasts and listening to a bunch of podcasts like that's sort of how i navigate through the world mostly yeah but that's like again back to the thing i was saying about you and maybe this conversation being like the most rhap psr community type of conversation that that, you know that that i've had on pod friends it's that like literally i'm sure that like everyone listening is like yes this is this is what i'm getting out of these things this is what like i'm connecting and not only not only seeing so much in the shows that we love and you know are obsessed about and t- you know obviously that we cover and talk about but also they're able to then process so much through our I- eyes mouths mm-hmm. uh what, mm-hmm. what what's the, qu- yeah. the voices and yeah. our, our commentary on all of mm-hmm. it which i think is kind of cool yeah. and you know i mean that kind of makes it, it brings me to uh a question about um just sort of like there's so there's so much there and i don't want to mm-hmm. i almost i'm going to i'm actually going to pause for a split second because this is going to be a great place for me to add an ad break after yeah. what i just said but um there i don't th- yeah there's like there literally there are a million Okay, we're back from the break. Um, but literally, Grace, there are a million directions to kind of go in with this conversation from here. But something that I I want to kind of hop back to is, you know, you kind of have brushed over some of the 
some of the more challenging things. And, and again, I think a lot of people could relate. Like that's one of the things I love about pod friends where mm -hmm. people, you know, I'll hear from people after the fact, like, Oh, this person mentions like mental health or this kind of struggle or that kind of struggle. And I relate mm -hmm. to that. Um, but you know, on a lighter note, I actually wanted to talk about something that I think a lot of people in this community might know you for, which are games. And early in this conversation, you talked about, uh, Camp, summer camp and yeah. Yeah. what you've done there and the games um but i want to ask like what uh what kind of games like would you bring in well i say bring into but like what kind of games would you introduce to that the community there uh like in summer camp yeah um kids well so like we did a lot of plan you know you have to entertain like you know our camp was pretty tiny we were a specialty camp so we were a camp for children also living with type 1 diabetes uh all the all the campers had had type 1 diabetes oh yeah so a pretty small camp um but i think there's like two things the two ones that i i love the most so like you know there's all like the daily activities kids are gonna go you know we'll send a group off to go kayaking or that kid those kids are gonna go to the rock wall or whatever um but there's two two times that I, I really love in the day. So one is like there's so much downtime, especially at diabetes camp, because mm -hmm. um, you the kids all need to like carb count so that they know how much insulin they're going to take for their meal. And they actually like one thing that like, you know, as a someone living with diabetes, especially like running summer camp, I was a camp director. So I was a camper and then a counselor and then the counseling director. And then I became the camp director. So that's my yeah. like, trajectory. And I didn't just I ran summer camp, but I also ran family camps. So the whole family would come for the weekend. Maybe the kid was too young to camp or didn't know if they wanted to go. And I would run teen weekend programs and day camps. So I did a lot of camp stuff. Uh, there's so much downtime at like summer camp where, especially at diabetes camp, because yeah. yeah, kids have to like, you check your blood sugar and then you go to the board and you're like, what are we going to eat? What, are, what, are, what am I going to have for lunch? Uh, you have to decide before you eat because the doctor needs to tell you or your pump needs to tell you how much yeah. insulin you're going to have. So you have to decide, yeah, I'm in the mood for three pancakes today because it's breakfast and I'll have two sausages and I'll have a glass of milk. And you have to count how many carbs that is. And so mm -hmm. you have to do that with each one of your individual campers. And so there's a ton of downtime at camp. And what you know we had to like enforce with our, our staff is like, you have to be good at filling in downtime. The times where yeah. your kids are going to like act up are going to be when there's downtime. That's when bullying happens. That's when homesickness happens. You know, they're going to go kayaking and they'll, you know, they might think about it for a second, but then they're like kayaking or they're climbing the yeah. rock wall, you know, but it's like, the time where you're just like sitting around waiting for something to happen. So you have to be good. And so when I was talking earlier about like all the things, you know, the bits that I have in my, but like we used to have this thing, it's, you have to have your back pocket games. You have to have like these little things you can constantly be doing. If you notice that your kids are like bored that you have to do. So like um, my favorite game was like this game called Ninja which people might know where like everybody gets like a turn and you can only move like one movement and you have to try to like tag somebody else's hand. And mm -hmm. anyway, it's really fun. Or there's like Gaga ball where, uh, Ooh. yeah, it's like uh, you're in a pit and, Play Gaga uh, ball. You, yeah, it's, it's great. You like, you know, it's kind of like dodgeball, but you're kind of like using like volleyball hands. Um, so all the stuff that you could like do while your kids have downtime was the best. And then I loved like camp wide games and specifically ones where like you got to be super creative. So we would do like, you know, you would take a board game like Scrabble. And so a bunch of the staff would have letters on their and they would run around. And if yeah. a camper tagged them, they get to bring them back and then spell out, try to like spell it a word with all the people that they've had. Except for it was like, you could be very creative with the stuff you're doing or like, you know, murder mystery nights or things like that were like, for me, some of the most fun things I got to see, like, you know, we, we created them and put them on for kids and then kids got to engage with them and have fun. So, um, yeah, yeah camp is super cool. Uh, camp is the best. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because I have, um, my best friend, Eric, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes, I think when he was 16 and we actually went to high school together. We were not friends in high school. We knew each other in high school. We weren't like friends in high school. And, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, it's interesting because I am, so one thing I've I kind of noticed with him and then also with a lot of other folks who through him I've met who are who live with type 1 diabetes or with diabetes in general is that so many of those people one have like been involved in these types of camps but also 
well, unfortunately, a lot of people also haven't like found that community other than like the diabetes online community and all these yep. things. Yep. But I, I'm like fascinated because, you know, I wonder where the advocacy in your interest in advocacy and kind of doing that type of work started. I mean, obviously there's the camp, which you mentioned, which relates yeah. to that. And I know you work in like the diabetes advocacy space, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, like what, where did that kind of pop up for so, you? Because you, yeah. I mean, like in many of the podcasts we even talked about, there's a lot of like issues and I know you're a curious person, but mm -hmm. like that doesn't necessarily always translate to action. And so I'm like fascinated by that. Yeah, I, I, you know, the one thing I'll, I'll just quickly say about like, so yeah. specifically the camp I went to was, uh, is a camp for children with type 1 diabetes. It's like, I went there as a camper as well. Right. I went when I was 15 and I got diagnosed with diabetes and I was a rule follower. So they were like, you have to test your blood sugar three times a day. You have to take, you know, take your, uh, you know, five shots a day, uh, more if you want to have any snacks, you know. You mm -hmm. take a, a two shot, a shot at the beginning of the day, a shot at the end of the day, and then before every time you eat and, you know, do all these things and you're good. And I remember like it, you know, probably you meet with your doctor, at least in Canada and Ontario uh, every yeah. three months. And I remember going back and they were like, okay, wow, great. You did all the things here. You know, I wrote down all my blood sugars and they, they tested my, like, you know, they do this test called an A1C, which tests mm -hmm. what your blood sugar has been on average. And, you know, you want it to be in a certain range. And so I'm, I just remember this meeting, the second meeting I went to where they were like, okay, you did it. And like, essentially then they were like, okay, do it for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're like, wait, what? Like, I kind of thought like I could do it and then I wouldn't have to do it. And so you know, I you're still a rule follower, so I still do it for a bit. And then it just got incredibly tiring, you know, like even very quickly. I remember, um, you know, being having diabetes burnout. You're like, nobody else has to do all the things that I have to do because I got this stupid yeah. disease for literally no reason. Nobody else in my family has type one diabetes. It's so stupid that I got it. And it's so annoying. And, you know, I was also internally, I didn't tell anybody this at the time, but I was dealing with like, I'm pretty sure I'm yeah. queer. I might be, I might even be trans, but like, I don't even know the word for trans. I was right. very depressed. And I had this moment um, uh, where uh, I took, I took too much insulin. I had had a lot to, to drink. I was at a high school party yeah. and I took too much insulin and kind of like admitted at the same time, like, yeah, that was an accident, but also I don't really care. And so uh, somebody called my parents and I got driven to the hospital and that was yeah. the moment of like, we got to figure something out. Maybe you should go see like the social worker at part of your clinic. And that was okay. I went and it was fine for a bit. And then I went to camp and I met people who understood exactly what it was like to be going mm -hmm. through the stuff that I was going through. Uh, met people who even just little things like, doesn't suck when your blood sugar's low and you have to eat like everything in your fridge uh, because like you just like are so hungry. It's like, you know, and I was like, yeah, that does suck. Uh, does it suck when your blood sugar is high? Yeah, it does suck. And just like being able to relate to people, I often say, like I was going to therapy after like I had taken too much insulin, but I really do think like going to summer camp, meeting people who I'm still friends with to this day, it literally saved my life. Um, yeah. Like uh, there's no, it, it didn't change, it like changed my life, but it saved my life. And so I'm very fortunate that I like got the opportunity to go to camp I meet all these amazing people. And I often think like people living with diabetes, I, I have a bunch of different things that I think like they certainly make my life harder. I'm very, pri I'm very privileged in many ways. I have like a good job, whatever, like, but being trans is hard. Living with diabetes yeah. is hard. I, I got diagnosed with colitis a few years ago. Like that's really hard. Um, all of these things. And every, yeah. every, through all of those things that I've ever sort of struggled with in my life, the only things that ever really made it better to the point that I was like, it's okay. And it's, it's worth having all of these things that are hard in your life. And actually in some ways they actually make you a very strong person or, you know, a, you know, a better, not a better person. I don't know, that sounds bad, but like the people I know who live with right. diabetes, it's like this full-time job. And so like the stuff that people living with diabetes are doing on top of just having to live their life is like a lot. And so mm -hmm. I think two things here, one is that like, if we can help build community in that sense, um, that's amazing. And we should be trying to do that. That's what I love about like these summer camp programs. I, I you know, support um, this camp called Camp Ten Oaks, which is in Ottawa, which is a camp specifically for LGBTQ, either kids or like children of queer, like parents. Um, mm -hmm. And so, again, it's just like providing community to like people and, and 
knowing that other people are going through things that are hard and also celebrating the things and, and getting to know other, these other people. Um, and, and then, yeah, advocating for, you know, the government and the world to make it easier for us to, it shouldn't be harder for us yeah. to have to live our lives. We shouldn't be at a financial disadvantage in our life because we got a chronic disease. I don't, I fundamentally don't think that that's fair. And so yeah. these are all the things I think it's community and then fundamentally like not being at a disadvantage um, in, in our life. Like trans people shouldn't, it shouldn't be harder for trans people to find housing. You know, um, yeah. these are all just like, basic human rights that we should have uh, my insulin. I, I don't even think I should have a copay on my insulin. I actually don't. Right. But like, I don't okay, think great. anybody should have a copay on their, on their insulin, you know? So these are all the things that sort of have drived me to do any of my advocacy work or any, you know, organizations that I want to donate to or anything like that. Like, I think that those are the two most important things is like equity and community, I think are the two most important things. And, you know, there's a lot of ways in which like this community, like Rob is a podcast and then yeah. kids are like, you know, not only does this, does this, these two groups, like there's such wonderful community in here, but I fundamentally believe there's so many people in this community who are also striving for the same like equity in the world as other people. Um, some of the stuff that I've seen, like, you know, Rob, you know, um, be an advocate for when like, there's like things happening in the world and he's willing to, you know, I mean, let's talk about the pride of spoken. Like, I, you know, yeah. we, we were like, let's have shirts and can the shirts be donated to a good cause? And Rob immediately yeah. says, yes, I'm very happy to do that. You know, um, I think that these communities fundamentally believe in the same things that I do and they're a wonderful community on top of that. Yeah. And I, I, I absolutely want to ask you about the community in a little bit, but something that, you know, I think maybe thinking out loud, because <laughs> I just had this realization as yeah. you were talking is that I think like the beauty of pod friends um, and people sometimes say to me, they're like, oh, Matt, you should do an interview with yourself or have someone interview you or something. And yeah. I think the reality is like the part, the place where the conversations are the most fruitful is like where I kind of see something that maybe I connect with in my experience and then, you know, could kind of like dive deeper with that. And the thing I'm connecting with with you is, you know, other than like this beautiful community, which we'll definitely talk more about. Yeah. is like this thing where like you mentioned like type one diabetes and being trans and colitis and like there's like stacking these things on top of each other and then i think of like being a black person but then also yeah. a queer person yeah. and then also like i grew up with like horrible asthma but also still have like a horrible a death really deathly like nut allergy and that type right. of thing which i also navigate like do you have a <laughs> like a, a hierarchy of these things in your mind or like where uh, some of them take priority over others. Cause like one of the things I feel like I sometimes struggle with, with all of these different things, which I guess you could call them identities or, you know, challenges is that it's like, it's, I find sometimes it's so hard to bring all of those heavy things into a space because we don't always see like, even in the shows that we watch, we don't necessarily see like the trans person with type one diabetes and colitis mm -hmm. and like all of these things, or we don't see like the black queer person who has like the nut allergy and you know, yeah. all these other things. Right. And so I like, how do you n navigate that uh, asking for myself, but yeah. also for others who probably are like, you know, like I, I always think of the people who I hear from who like relate to, you know, they relate to one person's story in Pod Friends, then the next person, then the next person, but for yeah. different reasons. Like, how do you navigate that? It, it feels like a weird question, but no. maybe because I have no clue what the answer is personally. No, I always, I, I've said this, like, I've, I've made this joke to my friends sometimes where it's like, um, I wonder what, like, I, I actually don't want to know the answer to, but I wonder if, like, every, if you asked everybody at my work, so, like, mm -hmm. say they have to, like, explain me to somebody who like somebody who kind of like needs their memory jogged and yeah. like you know grace the blank 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 like what are the blank blank blanks <laughs> yeah. um you know like uh you know oh, grace the trans diabetic in the corner you know you know Grace, you know <laughs> in uh, the corner. you know yeah i actually i do have like a corner uh, i have like a corner cubicle uh oh, fancy. Like, oh, you know, yeah i know i know With, i'm sure uh, yeah <laughs> it looks like Quiz park and and i can see this in the cn tower it's pretty cool uh oh no deal. um yeah. or like yeah you know you know grace like uh the, the witty podcaster you know like i like if yeah you have different people yeah and it's funny because i think that like as you were saying it i i think that like you know if my identities make up a pie chart i think that they fluctuate depending on 
where I am. I mean, I was mm -hmm. at, um, you know, I, uh, I was at a healthcare conference a few weeks ago where as part of my job, I'm like a representative of Diabetes Canada. And I feel like my type one diabetes, like when I'm there, uh, is a, is a much bigger chunk of my identity than it is when I am, am like with my friend, actually that's a trick. A lot of my friends, like I know from camp and I have type one diabetes. So like actually it yeah. plays a big chunk or like, you know, when I'm on the heart stopper pod, my, yeah. my transness and queerness, I feel like play it's, 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 it takes up more space than when I'm on, you know, the shining girls podcast, you know, whatever, whatever example, you know, I, I can give. And so I feel like I don't have like a hierarchy of, yeah. I think my identities, I think that they are all important um, uh, to me and they hold more weights at different times, depending on where I am. I mean, I, I you know, that's such like an a, a experience of like uh, queer people, I think of like, yeah. um, you know, that like, and I think, you know, black people as well, there's like, you know, the, yeah. the, the shifting of what your yeah. identity is, uh, depending yeah. on like who you're with. Um, I feel like heavily, like when I'm trying, like there's times where like, I don't want to be known as a trans person because it's like just for my own safety. Uh, yeah. It's easier. Um, and so, yeah, my identities like shift and sway depending on who I'm with, where I am. Um, yeah. What podcast I'm on. Yeah. Like one of the things that I, like really appreciate about you and your voice in this community well in this community is that like you know and we've talked about this on the heart stopper podcast a bunch but like there are like it's so easy to like look out and see a group and like whether that's black people or people living with type 1 diabetes or trans people or like queer people or like whatever whoever it might be and you kind of like a lot of how a lot of these identities have been represented in media is just like trauma. And yeah. I feel like yeah. something that's really beautiful is that you also in like sharing your experiences, share like the beauty of those. But um, before I even like move on from this like topic, I'd mm -hmm. love to know, like, at least from your perspective, because I could like, I think when I, th maybe I'll just stop in and say like, when I think about like, being black there's so many beautiful amazing things about that and i'm like so thankful yeah. to be a black like i believe it or not grace i never have like the as as tough as things could be i never have the thought that i'm like oh man i wish i were white you know yeah. and or like you know even in being queer i think that there's you know there's a there are a lot of moments where and we see this in the heart stopper and talking about it but you know you kind of have to like there's sometimes grieving of a loss of like oh i don't get to have the life that like people assumed that I would have or told me I would have. But beyond that, like, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything that you just kind of want to like celebrate about yourself in the, in those identities in mm. this moment or like anything that people don't see when it comes to like navigating with those things? Because I, I ask this question because I don't want anyone to leave this podcast thinking like, Oh, look at grace. Look at how those, like those things suck. Because I've also heard you talk about how amazing, you know, the, the different like identities you carry are. Yeah. I mean, I, the, for me, the thing again, like I'm just, you know, going to end up going back to like why I think community is so important is that like yeah. the best piece of all of the things, all of these like identities that I carry have been the way in which they've opened up doors for me to connect with people who I wouldn't have maybe otherwise connected. So like, mm -hmm. obviously like type one diabetes plays a huge role in that because, you know, it like foundationally like camp is such a important piece of, of me. It's like, it was my first like job coming out of university. Um, you know, my, my best, one of my, my really good friends, I'm going to be at his wedding. Like we met at camp. Um, and so yeah, again, like I talk about like these people living with type one diabetes are like, you know, these incredible people. I think that like, you know, um, it's not like that they're suffering through their life. Right. It's that, like they just kind of have to do extra stuff that other people don't have to do. And in many ways, it's like, you know, the way I could like look at somebody and, and you know, be like uh, we do like look at their plate of pasta and they can like do the math on how many carbs that means to like how much to know how much insulin they have to take. It's a thing yeah. that like people with diabetes do all the time. So I just think like some of the people I've met through diabetes organizations have been some of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. And then, you know, I think about like all the people I've got to connect with through like queer spaces and trans spaces. Um, like, yeah, trans people and queer people are like incredible and amazing and are like breaking the mold of like, you know, heteronormativity. And like, you know, there's obviously a lot of stuff happening in the world right now that like people are trying to like protect that like cis heteronormativity. 
Um, yeah. But like queer people are so awesome. Um, like they're so awesome. Um, and we bring like this unique perspective, I think, to the world because we're looking at the world in a way that like it wasn't exactly made for us. And yet we're trying to figure out how to like make it work for us, I think is like really cool. So um, yeah, I've just met like, you know, the way we connected through a lot of the stuff that we've done, like, you know, we, we actually like, I think our firm has probably was like a wrestling, was like a wrestling wrap up, uh, if I'm not forgetting something yeah. else oh, along, sure. on the line. But then, yeah, yeah, you came on Pose and then we did Heartstopper and like, you know, the things that we, we can relate to that like other people can't relate to. I don't mean to feel like exclusionary in that sense. Um, you know, don't make me go on a rant about how the A is not for ally, Matt. Uh. <laughs> um, but uh you know it's just like we you and i have a yeah. connection that like you know non-queer people won't yeah won't understand you know and so yeah that's for me like the and even colitis like getting guys i met a few people yeah. who uh you know it's just like the the openness in which we talk about like poop yeah. uh it's like that's something i had before you know yeah so yeah uh that's been the best thing about like all of these like things that like yeah they're like sometimes make my day harder uh and in many ways like i've got to meet a lot of cool people um and like i don't always believe that like like i don't believe that people should have to go through hard things but yeah. i also do believe that going through hard things can sometimes um you get things out of it occasionally because like mm -hmm. i i don't agree with the like you know everything's meant to happen you, you know i i don't yeah. fundamentally subscribe to that like if we can make not bad things happen to people that would be tremendous that would be great um but there's ways in which like i've had to go through things that i think have made me a better person on the other side of it so yeah, yeah. a superhero some might say mm, no but yeah. I might say, okay. uh, great. It, 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 that's why we call you Stella Skews. You. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's, there's like so much that we've already touched on, but I want to talk about this RHAP PSR community. Like what, how did you mm -hmm. find this community? What's your origin story? And like, mm -hmm. I, I don't only mean from like getting involved in the community, yeah. but also from the perspective of like, you know that that journey from like here listening to the podcast to actually being on them and yeah. all of that fun stuff yeah so uh i've always been a huge survivor fan it's like i think I, like i don't think i've watched anything maybe wrestling i've watched more wrestling than anything else in my life but well um survivor only probably because there's like so there's so I know, much there's like on a million yeah. hours of wrestling mm -hmm. movie. yeah but like i have very fond memories of watching you know jumping in at some point in that first season and you remember when the sun, the finales used to be on Sunday and my mom yeah. would, uh, we would have Sunday parties for the Sunday survivor finale. So we'd have ice cream and we'd buy things from like the bulk barn, gummy bears and syrup and all that fun stuff. And so survivor just held like such an important piece of like, you know, it was a thing my family all watched together. And then we, I kind of fell off of it. And when I was in university, I got back into Survivor. I believe the season I watched, uh, the first season I watched back was Gabon, uh, first season mm. HD. I love that season. I have such a soft spot for that season. And so I got back into it and then decided like, oh, I need to watch everything I missed. And I'm actually going to go back and rewatch everything. So I like solely did the rewatch and I was, you know, have not stopped watching since. And then around season third which was the season 31 i guess which is the second chances season mm -hmm. um i had like seen like the rob you know like rob is a podcast stuff but it was the interviews with all the the players like pitching themselves for second chances that made mm -hmm. me get really involved in uh, the rob is a podcast world listening to as many podcasts in a in a week as uh as i could and then when Rob as a podcast decided to come to Toronto for a live show, that's when I, uh, in order to make sure I would get tickets to the show, um, uh, became a patron to get early access and fell in love with the community. I did a lot of, you know, going back to games, I did a lot of like, uh, sort of like, you know, um, secret H was big for a while, yeah. uh, doing some of that, uh, that stuff. Um, and then, yeah, the class of 2020, uh, Rob pitched it and I decided I was going to apply. But at the same time, there was this thing in the back of my head that said like, okay, if you don't get it, I kind of kept saying, Ooh, wouldn't that be like a dream to get the podcast on Rob as a podcast. Right. And I thought to myself, well, if you don't get on, 
why don't you work towards maybe you get on in the future? And so get your reps in. You know, I've heard Rob talk about like, you know, the 10,000 hours uh, of it all. Um, maybe you just have to, you know, start a podcast. So I did this sort of like, if anybody's looking to do a rewatch podcast where it seemed to be hot at the time, like anybody wants to do something. And that's what Hudson, uh, mm -hmm. my good friend, who was holed up, reached out and was like, I've had this idea of like watching old queer media and seeing it holds up. And I was like, that's so fun. And we should call it hold up. And that was born. And luckily at the same time, Rob like allowed me into the class of 2020, which I feel very uh, privileged on. Again, that like anybody really wants to listen to me um, it still kind of blows my mind. I had this really great day where um, I had done a Big Brother Canada podcast, a recap, and one of my coworkers like teams messages me and it like calls me and is like i'm listening to you on robin's podcast how is that possible i was like oh my god i don't know I'm just, I'm, i don't know and i kind of explained like that whole story and they're like this is wild that you're like on this podcast I was like, yeah that's you know i don't know um so yeah it's been really cool and then you know obviously i did a i've done a, a fair amount of stuff with rob as a podcast but i've always loved subscripted tv and um i don't know i just sort of i became a patron of the poster against the script I actually didn't listen to it th uh, forgive me joshua if you're listening to this i didn't watch a ton listen to a lot of the podcasts that were on poster recaps but i really loved some of the stuff that josh was promising as part of the patreon program for poster recaps so he was going to do you know people would vote on movies and him and his him and his wife emily would watch them and mm -hmm. there was just a bunch of stuff in there that i was like that sounds interesting and he launched the discord and discord has really become a place especially during covid uh that's really become like i'm on there a lot uh i'm in there a lot a lot uh yeah. and you know, a lot of the stuff I've done, you know, camping, uh, you know, being a camp director, uh, you know, it's all about community. And so, you know, chatted with Josh and it eventually sort of became uh, a moderator in there. And also, you know, um, I, you know, I just kept pitching stuff to Josh and he would say yes. And so I, I don't know why, but he's continued to let me continue podcasting about stuff over on Post Show Recaps. And then, yeah, recently suggesting uh, Rob did a call out. He said, I'm look, you know, I'd like to cover sports and I don't know how to do it. And so yeah. uh, not that he doesn't know how to do it, but he was kind of looking for ideas. And so I pitched him something and he said, OK, why don't you do it? And I, said, I was pitching it actually as like I would listen to it. Um, right. But uh, he was like, no, you you do it. I, you know, so go for it. I trust you. And, uh, so that's been really cool. I've really loved that. Again, it's like for that, it's like diving into different communities. You know, we did an episode on hurling this like Irish sport. We're just like yeah. talking about what that community is like Australian rules football. Uh, that's been like the fun of that stuff of like, it's, it's sports and community. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's interesting. Cause you, you, um, started to talk, you mentioned Josh Wiggler and Rob, yeah. obviously, but yeah. like, does anyone stand out in your mind as you think about like people you you've you kind of met as you started that journey or people you've met along that journey that kind of have been have been uh pivotal to your you know kind of the place that you are now where you're everywhere you're literally like this like the week that this comes out there are probably yeah. i would guess like five different podcasts that people could hear you on um just like download that content and listen yeah. to who knows but yeah like yeah does anyone kind of jump out to you as like people who've helped form the journey i mean it it I mean, both Rob and Josh, it's hard not to, you know, shout them them out as sort of like the two like patriarchs of, of these of these two networks. What would um, you say your relationship is with each of them? I feel I'm curious about that, but also I feel like I wonder if I, I yeah, I, I think something that uh, fascinates me is that um, I don't know. Like, I always just wonder what people think, like, goes on behind the scenes or, like, if we have, if we all have, like, potlucks together, which, like, obviously we don't because, like, we no. don't live in the same place, but also no. pandemic world. Um, but, yeah, like, what's that? I don't know. What do you I think mean, about them? It's pretty cat. I mean, it's pretty cat. It's nothing serious. I mean, like, you know, me with Rob every once in a while to chat about, you know, the the podcast and, you know, if he wants to have me on, it's, you know, he, he, I think that they, they're both so incredibly like down to earth people. They're not yeah. these like, you know, you know, and I think that both of them from, again, like, I think the reason these communities have been so successful is because of their sort of accessibility in a way like the amount of stuff rob is doing all the time to like be accessible to patrons is like incredible like if you look at all the patron content like so much of it is about sort of getting access to to him in a way and um and he's so he's incredibly down to earth he's incredibly uh nice and you know i think that um you know and 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 josh i 
you know, I, I really have become, I think, you know, a, a lot of the stuff I do is on post show recaps and I like really can't like, you know, say enough about how much like Josh, I think he just sort of believed in me in a way that like, I, I don't know why, I don't know why. Um, and I just like, I, I vibe so much with Josh on about, you know, in terms of like being in that discord and, and eventually becoming a moderator, like on like what community means um, to people. And we vibe on a lot of the, um, a, a, lot, a, a lot of similar things about, um, you know, if someone's speaking up, it probably means there's other people who are thinking it and really mm -hmm. wanting to make sure that like we're building inclusive space. And, you know, some of these like the sentiments of like, well, if we can do that, why wouldn't we do that? It, in terms of like things that are about accessibility or equity and things like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, Ariel is another person, uh, my co-host on Post Recaps Theater, who I just adore him so much. And, uh, um, you know, also shout out Hudson, who, you know, mm -hmm. we, we created Hold Up together. Um, and that has been something that like as sort of other stuff has, has come up, we've been doing that less and less. We haven't done that episode yeah. in quite a while. But my first like, you know, podcast partner um, in a way. And and then, yeah, through Post Recaps Theater, like a Ariel and I, you know, that was the first like we do that every not every week. We've taken a few weeks off. But in terms of like it's not like we're doing a show where there's a season we've just, we've kind mm -hmm. of just been doing it since August. Um, and like, it's never, I've never even thought about the idea that like, Oh, we're going to take a little bit of time off. I, I just love Ariel so much when he brings, um, uh, to podcasting his like, I think he has a lot of that same, like wants things to be fun energy, which I very much appreciate. Um, yeah. so he's been great. I feel like this is so dangerous, Matt, because you've now like, is, is there anybody you want to like shout out? And I feel like this is like giving the Oscar speech and you're so afraid you're going to like forget like, you know, your partner's name or something like, well, there's no. too many people I think. To, <laughs> to name. No. And I think that's, I think it's interesting because like along the way at different points in your journey, like, you'll definitely think of different people like yeah i'm sure there's a point where like hudson's the first person that you think yeah. about or you know and and uh i i appreciate you indulging me with that question because i was like how's grace gonna handle this landmine who's mm -hmm. gonna be listening i know well uh will jessica least be listening and be like you didn't mention me in the pop uh, bond podcast Our james bond you know we only did a few of them because kind of yeah. like we ended up thinking that it made more sense you know we did a few up uh, we kind of had people vote on on different eras of bond and then the new one came out and then it kind of felt like all right the movie's out and like are people clamoring for bond content i don't think so i think when there's another bond thing i would love to get back on the mic with jessica lee's but like i feel so fortunate that like if i just run through sort of like the people i have been able to either just like be on a podcast like um uh man i don't know if karen armstrong be a fairly intimidating person i, I don't know talked if you... about this before yeah uh i always remember rob saying he, he's always kind of a bit like a cat uh that you're like you know if you meet a cat at a hat you're not really sure and i've been really appreciative of like i feel like i don't know whether this is true or not but feeling like i broke the ice with taryn was like uh, a really great moment getting to be on some of the big brother podcasts um with taryn getting to do pose with zed um like right now i've been doing uh shining girls with like dr amanda uh and, and melissa are both like incredible podcasts. i do a lot of stuff with rich filiberto who like has been such a great support uh, person for me over the last few years as well. So like, yeah, there's so many people to name, but I feel like um, one of the things I've loved getting to do is I love, I love a podcast format where it's, it's co-hosts. So with Heartstopper, we did this where it was like you and yeah. me, and then every once in a while you bring on like the third Ariel. person. <laughs> and I love when those two people have never podcasted before. It's one yeah. of my absolute treats is to like play a little bit of matchmaker. Um, like I think when you podcasted with you, had, the first podcast you ever did was Zed was a pose podcast, right? Where you came on yeah. uh, for pose. Uh, we recently did some stuff with winning time where it was like, I was podcasting with Jason. Was, Jason's also incredible. I need to shout out Jason. Um, yeah. Mari. I mean, it's too many people, man. I can't. I know. Me. Stop no, me. I'm good as hell. Yeah. Stop, Grace. Yeah. Stop. You're, mm -hmm. you're, I, I know you want to shout out Everyone. a lot yeah. more people, but yeah. you don't, you can't just stay here shouting people out. This is, yeah. but I, I think that this is kind of cool. You know, it's, uh, this is just a nice, wholesome podcast where I think people could kind of see one. I've like said this a ton of times, but I think a lot of people could see themselves in, in you for a variety of reasons, which I think is like the beautiful part about this community. I'll also mention as a side note, and you mentioned wrestling as like the first time we podcasted, but actually the first time where I was like, 
who's this Grace character? Was actually when I was watching, like, it must have been Big Brother 22, and you were podcasting with Taryn. I'm sure it was like Taryn and Rob and whoever. Yeah. And I remember uh, hearing your hearing your um, your um, CG your I think it's your your CGM your continuous glucose smile. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like noise yeah. things, whatever. Yeah. I totally probably butcher that. But no, like, it's oh, Grace has diabetes, and some of yeah. my best friends have diabetes, and like yeah. connect in that way. And so I, feel, I think I feel like it's yeah. a very funny story. I think I've explained it probably on like a pod or two, but like if you don't know me, like you, I, but I feel like if you've heard me on a podcast, you have definitely heard my like insulin pump make noise, which is basically yes. my insulin pump is telling me something about my diabetes. Like it's either mm -hmm. telling me like, oh, your blood sugar is a little bit high, I'm going to give you some insulin. Oh, your blood sugar is yeah. dropping a little bit like whatever it's like telling me something um mm -hmm. but i feel like yeah the first time i won the first times ever i think the first time i ever podcasted somebody said like oh my gosh it's so cool that there's like a diabetic podcast yeah. like, how did you know that and they're like i heard your pump in the background Same. and so i do feel like it is kind of a fun little easter egg calling card um in, in my i hope people don't get annoyed by it but my response is and i think josh wiggler told me this once so i was like uh if people are complaining about your life-saving device i think they'll have to like check check themselves so um i'm sorry if it annoys Aww. you but it's also saving my life so oh my gosh no mm. first of all mm. uh, uh to borrow from heart stopper uh grace don't stop say apologizing. Your, you don't have to say you're yeah. sorry stop apologizing please i do i am canadian i do love saying sorry i do sorry 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 sorry, sorry. sorry. very canadian this is the most canadian, canadian accent do I have a canadian accent i feel like your stories know. are very Canadian, but other than that, I mean, you do give yeah, Canadian, but you give big Canadian energy, is what okay. I'd say. BC, yeah. so. Yeah. BC. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that was a little too funny um no, just anyway like i think something i want to know about you because like we're kind of getting to that sad point in time yeah. where i have to where i'm like stalling and spinning the wheels so we could keep yeah. going even yeah. though you know i i uh i i'd love to like ask this question to people and not even like i don't even know i think i've asked it Honestly, Chris, I don't remember half of what I ask people in interviews. That's, it's just I go on more on vibes. I go more yeah. on vibes. But I kind of I want to ask you something um, that's kind of just like big picture looking at your life and at your story a little bit. Nothing, yeah. no pressure, nothing intimidating. Yeah. And, you know, a question I love to ask people is like, if your life were a book or documentary, what would the title be and why? And I, I just love to hear what people say. But um, I know that this might be challenging. I wonder, do you have a response to that question? I don't want to put you on the spot as a chronic overthinker, but also as a chronic overthinker, the, the which title, I kind of am. You might, you'll, you, you probably have this figured out already. The title of my book or documentary. I, yeah. I, I think, I mean, there's like a bunch of, you could have a bunch of puns on, on my name. So, you know, uh, a little bit of, give yourself a little bit of grace, Amazing. you know, oh, okay. uh, yeah. you know, that's, oh. yeah, that's probably it. Right. Uh, uh, cause <laughs> then like people, you know, and then when you buy the book, you're giving yourself a little bit of grace, right. That's good. Right. Is that's that like, good? A, it works on a lot of levels actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah. Look at that. Good grace. Wow. Good grace. <laughs> Thank you good. Yeah, do you have others? You, know. you just no. Little... That's it. I think you're known for yeah. your wit and your uh your I don't. What other words did people use? Your wit, your quickness, yeah. and all of the things. So if I got very I got very alarmed once. I was in a meeting and I made some. It was a very serious meeting. We're like not serious, but it was like a it was like a lot of people in the room, like vice presidents, executive directors, all these people, yeah. and. Uh, I made some joke and I remember someone saying like, you always know, you know, you always know it's a grace is in a meeting when there's a joke. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't know if that's good that like in front of all the VPs and the executive directors, you like, you just totally stall out my entire career. Cause I'm just going to only be known as the jokester. Um, but I, uh -huh. you know, I don't know. Yeah. But give, give, give yourself a little grace, you give know, yourself a little grace. Yeah. See, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Right. It yeah. is pretty good. I'm sure it's already a book. So yeah. You know, grace, there's like, We've talked a lot about kind of like your a lot of things that relate to you in this community. I think that something that's like tough is talking about things that like are that people haven't heard you talk about because you've talked about so much. Uh -huh. But I, I am kind of curious about like advice you have for people. If there's like wisdom you have to share with people in the community in in any sense, because there's so much that 
we all already kind of get to learn from you and you know gain from you in terms of navigating this world in terms of the all of the different topics we've talked about but i wonder like is, do you have any like damn i'm not great with the puns i was looking for a grace pun there uh do you have any like uh, um, any yeah. uh, nuggets of uh we're not wisdom damn couldn't get um, the grace pun in there or the leader okay. one any leadership <laughs> advice Ooh, hop aboard the leadership um <laughs> so that could be another book title name if you want um so uh you know i you know i i used to be like you know um preparing i used to give this it, i feel like i used to give this advice a lot which is like it can't hurt to say it can't hurt to ask which is a thing yeah. i've done i feel like a lot of like you know, the success I've had in the, in the podcasting community and getting to is like, cause I've been willing to ask, uh, for things, but I, I also want to caveat that with like, yeah, you have to like set yourself up to be in a position where like, if you get told no, uh, you'll be okay. Um, yeah. and whether that's just like being in the right headspace to know like, okay, I'm going to ask this thing and I'll be okay if I get told no, um, or having a friend you can go vent to if somebody, you know, tells you no, or says maybe not all of that thing, but some of that thing, you know, cause I feel like a lot of the success I've had, um, in a lot of places is, is by kind of like going for it, just doing it. I'm, I can be, because I'm an overthinker, there's a lot of yeah. ways in which I can also be very impulsive because I do the thing before my brain can tell me why that's a bad idea. Like it's like a, a survival mechanism that I, I, I did, uh, I've done a lot in my life. And so, um, for in many ways in my life, I've been very lucky and that has like worked out and in other ways it like didn't work out. And the times where it didn't work out and then it sucked was when I like didn't, put all the things in place before I like took the step. Like, I think it's very important in life to like take the leap. I'm a big believer. It's a huge camp philosophy of like, you have to step outside your comfort zone. You know, like you don't need to be like miles away from your comfort zone, but it is good to like step outside your comfort zone. Um, but like, you don't like, you know, you know, when I tell kids like, okay, you can climb that rock wall. You, I know you're afraid of heights, but like you can do this. Uh, I don't send them up without a harness. You know, mm -hmm. I don't send them up without like me being there the whole time to like talk to them. So like, you know, I think that, that for me was really uh, important advice in terms of like, yeah, it's, you have to take leaps sometimes and like go for it and be an advocate for yourself. There's a lot of ways in which like, you know, we talk back, back about identities. Like there are ways in which like, people will not be advocates for me. I'm the only trans person at my work. So like I have to be an advocate in mm. terms of like, and you know, it'd be great if like my allies uh, were advocates for me. And sometimes they yeah. are, but sometimes they don't actually know what to ask for. And so I have to do that myself. Yeah. But it's important to like set yourself up so that like, if you get told no, or you get met with resistance or whatever, that like you either like have the tools to be able to function or like, you can move forward. No, like if you're advocating for yourself about something that you, you think is like crucial to, to have and somebody says no, and it's also important to like figure out, okay, then what do I do when I get told no? What do I do next? If I really, really believe um, in this thing, I really yeah. think it should happen, you know? Um, and then the other piece of advice, uh, sorry, I'm going to like do, do two no, things this here. Is, this is, yeah. your, this is the point okay. we want. I want to hear from you. Okay. Somebody, a friend of mine told me once, I remember, I, I'm an overthinker, right, Matt? So my friend mm -hmm. was complaining to me one time and I said, ah, they probably like, you know, somebody said something, shitty. they probably didn't mean that. And my friend said, I'm really sorry, but actually the reason I vented was because I wanted someone to be able to say like, wow, that's, that sucks. That's shitty. Uh, and I remember yeah. one time I called my mom and I was complaining about this thing and she was like, well, you could do A, B or C. And I was like, I know I can do A, B and C, but a all of A, B and C are like more work. And I'm upset that I have to do A, B and C. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, I just wanted to call and for you to say, Ah, oh, that really sucks. And my mom yeah. has since like, you know, uh, use that like as like re reference that to me of like, I'll like complain about something or she'll be complaining about something. And she's like, I guess I just wanted to call so that you would say, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry you had a bad day, you know? Um, and so like as somebody who's an overthinker, if you're an overthinker who's out there, sometimes your friends just want you to be like, ah, I'm sorry. That sucks. I don't have a solution yeah. for you, but that sucks. Uh, yeah. You know, or maybe they do want a solution and then you can help them figure it out. But, you know, sometimes yeah. somebody just wants somebody to vent, you know? Yeah, and I think that that's that's like 
That's actually a really interesting point, even thinking about, you know, a lot of what we've talked about, because as like, as advocates, like that's definitely one thing that I would say links us, you know, in this world other than RHAP and other things that we've talked about, just, you yeah. know, sometimes there's this tendency to want to like fix things or offer help or like raise your hand and say like, okay, like, here's what my solution would be. And it's funny, I've had that same exact thing with my mom and I had to have a conversation with her once where I was venting to her about, I don't even remember what it was, but I remember exactly where we were. We were like in the car and I turned to her and, you know, I've always known my mom as someone who is like the fixer. My dad, my dad was always, and he, my dad passed away like five years ago, but mm. my dad was always like the one who would be more of like the oh, that's rough, but you could do it kind of type of thing. My mom right. very much like goes to the practical advice. And I remember once turning to her and being like, you know, sometimes I like you as my mom, I just, I don't like, I don't, I, I want you to be there as, as a parent or as my mom and like maybe less uh, as like someone I could look to for business advice or work advice or life advice in that way. And so I mm -hmm. think that's really deep. I think that's really deep and powerful. Do you know the um, thing I was complaining about? I'm I'm, I'm a millennial and I don't own a I don't own a printer and I had a prescription. I don't either. It was a new prescription and I like went to the pharmacy. I'm like, I just have this email of my prescription and they're like, No, you have oh to God. print it out. And I was like, I don't yeah. have anywhere to print it out. It's like whatever. And so I went home and I like call my mom. She's like, Well, yeah. my you could go to Staples. And I was like, No, I know I know I could go to Staples, but it's yeah. annoying that I have to go to Staples when I just like want to get this like medication and you shouldn't that have I need to go to uh, for my for my colitis you know i just want i just want it uh can't you know whatever and it's like you know i was just like i don't have a printer and i was like well you should have a printer or you could go to staples or whatever and i was just like i know it's I just like wanted no you, to you say, shouldn't yeah i just wanted you to say oh that's really annoying that you have to do like the extra steps you know yeah. i'm fired up about this now and i'm not going to go into it but i have i've had like similar issues that related to my mom and thankfully by the point i complained to her about my printer my millennial not having a printer issue. She was, she didn't offer advice. She kind of just understood how ridiculous it was that you have to print things in 2022. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, something that I want to kind of, as like, as we get closer to the end, the point where we have to say goodbye, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you, Grace, you know, you've given us your wisdom. You've, mm -hmm. uh, you, you had a great leader pun that I'm not even going to remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to ask like, just where things, you know, I know that, yeah, you're you're on your journey. You're going ahead on it, and I just want to ask: like, are there any goals or things you kind of want to put out into the universe on like where you're headed or where you want to be? No time limit on that one. But yeah, I'm curious you know, because like the people yeah. want to know and they want to also support you in that. Um, you know, I I you asked you you asked me this question and you gave me time to think about it and. I did. I really don't know if I have a, a, a goal. This is like, I feel like this sounds kind of silly to think like, yeah, I'm just sort of like floating rudderless, but I don't know that I have, um, I have goals. I'm a little bit in my life have always been, you know, it's funny for as much as I love routine and consistency, sometimes I, I want to break up that routine and consistency. And yeah. I don't, I don't want to go with no routine. I want to develop a new routine. Mm -hmm. that i that i want instead uh my grandmother uh i remember the story uh where um my grandmother loves to move furniture and so when it's thundering outside we always imagine uh that that is my grandmother mo Sorry. rearranging the furniture cool. um so yeah you'd often come up i don't really know my grandmother i i uh, she passed away when i was very young uh -huh. um but she loved to rearrange the furniture yeah. and to me that like you know the way i connect with that is that like yeah i I, I'm not going to get rid of all my furniture, but if I rearrange it and it like feels new and different, like that's fun for me. That's like the level of change that I like in my yeah. life. And so there's two things here is one is I'm kind of always a little bit like I am kind of looking for something new and different. And that's part of like, that's one thing, you know, about my identity that I didn't say, I also have ADD. Um, so I, you know, um, you know, there's ways in which like the routine also like does help me um, yeah. in that sense because I don't get sidetracked. But, um, you know, I'm constantly looking, okay, what's the next 
show that's coming or, you know, whatever. Um, but the other thing I've really liked, I mean, the off speed podcast, and then I have a couple, uh, I mean, the pride of spoken is a good example. And yeah. I believe there'll be a podcast coming out on the post show recaps patron feed, um, next month the, when this drops, which, um, is a totally different format than anything I've ever done before. Oh. Um, where we are not going to uh, watch a show and recap it. We are going to explore topics. So, um, you know, okay, uh, and when I know that thing I was saying earlier about like how, how TV and media can reflect culture. It's like a yeah. huge thing that I'm like super interested in. So like um, our anti, do people want anti heroes at the moment? I think no, because like we've had years and years uh, recently in North America of pretty terrible people getting away with stuff. And I think that people mm -hmm. are kind of like, I don't want Walter White. I don't want Don Draper. I want Ted Lasso. I want yeah. the nice guy. I want the guy who does good things and tries really hard and kind of struggles with that. I don't want like meth selling Walter White, you know? And so we're exploring this podcast. that's like about ideas and topics. So like what makes a good book adaptation? Uh, what's the best summer movie? Uh, this kind of stuff that like I'm excited to in our little world sort of break up the format of of some of the stuff. But not with everything. I, I love you know what we do with Heartstopper and, and what we're doing. Yeah, with a bunch of other podcasts. But yeah. um, getting to sort of play around with the format of of podcasts and dig a little bit you know into some of these uh, conversation pieces that I think are really interesting. Um, I would love to you know uh, fo maybe follow in a little bit of Karen's footsteps. I don't think I have the capacity mm -hmm. in the moment with a full time job to do Twitch, but like YouTube videos are an, an area that I would like to uh, explore. I'm a big games person, and I thought that uh, there were some people who were doing some really cool stuff at the beginning of COVID that was really interesting um, and compelling stuff in terms of like reality TV players playing uh, games and things that I would you know I'd be interested in like game night uh like a youtube channel game night so like there's some stuff i've explored um yeah and you know earlier i mentioned i feel like one of my skill sets is being good with with kids uh entertaining children i would like to when the world opens up a little bit it feels safer uh to start doing some more volunteering in that space and especially about queer with a queer and trans youth um yeah. because that's like i spent a lot of my life um my career was supporting children with type one diabetes, which I think is hugely important, but you know, if I can sort of provide some of that same stuff, that I got to provide for kids with type one to queer and trans kids. Um, I think that would be really cool. So, I mean, like, I don't have these like huge, like, you know, things that I can like quantify that I'll like, you know, if I do this thing in five years, I'll, I'll do it. But I have some like things that I would I'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that idea of moving the furniture around as like this broader metaphor for life and, you know, just shaking things up and doing things differently. And like, there's a lot that stays the same slash a lot that won't change. Like you get the example of having type one diabetes and then being like, okay, I've been doing everything I'm supposed to do. And it's like, okay, yeah. you have to keep doing that. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, I in that spirit, kind of as we wrap up, uh, I kind of want to give it to you, Grace. You're a you're a consummate professional and mm. a and a profound podcaster. I kind of want to give it to you to wrap us up. And I don't know, you know, maybe it's something deep you want to say. Maybe there's a game that you want to wrap oh. us up with. Maybe you want to wrap. <laughs> I was like, that might be a little complicated and involved. Yeah, that's pressure. Um, yeah. Maybe there's a joke that you would uh, tell to, or something you would say to the children. I do have a, a baby face. So maybe mm. you could like really see the kids in, in, in this, in this. Right. But like, you know, I want to kind of hand it to you to like wrap hmm. it up and do I, the pod thing do you know what matt i do if this is if i don't do if i don't execute this one well i think you have to cut it but i used to do this bit so i one of my favorite things about camp was uh -huh. campfires uh-huh and uh -huh. campfires were kind of you know we we would sing silly repeat after me songs and play stupid games and i love i mean i love campfire it's like you know um again that thing of like getting to entertain people and like being in front of people i remember this one time me and my friend tom um who like i don't know if tom's ever gonna listen to this but tom is one of my favorite people in the entire world met him at summer camp mm -hmm. he's from uh, liverpool uh oh. he's he's uh an incredible incredible person um who is just we vibed so much on like what we were getting out of camp um and he's just the best and so tom and i would often like uh just sign up to do campfire just the two of us and we just do campfire for an hour and then we'd lose our voice the next day 
but I used to have this bit that I would do. It's like this sort of long form joke that if you would like, we could reenact it. And I need you to play the role of um, person. You're calling me and you uh, you want to speak with shoes. Okay. Speak to my shoes. I got it. Bit. Got yeah. it. Got it. Uh, hello. You didn't even you didn't even do a ring. You didn't even do a well, ring. Oh, uh, uh, hold on. Bring, 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 mm. bring, bring. Yes. Ring, yes. Ring, yes. Ring, hello. Yes. Ring, hello. Ring. Oh. Oh. Hey. Uh, hey. May I please speak to shoes? Oh, you in fact. Oh, hey, Matt. Hey, how? You, oh, you want to speak to shoes? To shoes. Yes. You was talking about shoes. Um. Give me, uh, give me, give me a sec. I'll just get, I'll get you. Yeah. And I'll then I'm, just... and then I'm, uh, so I did the fake phone, which like, mm -hmm. uh, I did the like Aloha fake phone, which did you know that kids these days actually do a full hand, but that's not the story. Um, what? so then that's I'm putting cool. the phone down and pretending to put my hand over the bottom of the speaker, uh, because I'm then going to call to shoes down the hall. Uh, shoes, uh -huh. shoes, shoes. Yeah. It's for you. Shoes. Don't stick your tongue at me. Shoes. Shoes, come on, you gotta answer. It's Matt. He wants to. I don't know what he wants to talk about. I, no, Crocs. It's not for you. It's never for you, Crocs. Shoes, just pick up the phone. It's just. Matt. I don't know. It's Matt. It's. You don't want to. You're not gonna answer. What do you have? No soul. Come on. Shoes. Come. Shoes. Okay, I'll tell. But this is the last time. Hey, Matt. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, they're all tied up right now. It's the whole joke, right? That's the whole bit. That's the. That's the bit. Is that the shoes are tied up right now? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I used to do that at camp. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Grace. <laughs> it's so stupid. I, it's so stupid, but uh, you know, it's the best. I think that's a good note to end this podcast on. I really don't even. I can't go on. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say though to wrap it up? Because I could no. just cut it there. But you know what? Anything? Anything? No, I I appreciate you. I'm I'm I again. I'm like can't believe that like people requested uh, me to come on that you chose Tons to have me on the podcast i really appreciate you and the and what you do in a, in our little community and uh, pod friends it's so great it's so fun um yeah i mean i think just people be kind to uh each other uh you know uh people are just trying to live their lives you know uh so yeah just be kind and uh yeah chat with chat with me about any of the things that i like to talk about and okay and or not sometimes i like to hear about what people are interested in so yeah, uh, I really appreciate you having me on. This was so much fun. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to my conversation with Grace. And I just love talking with Grace in general. I love how we're able to talk about serious things and funny things and shenanigans and camp and games and just all of the, the above. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about Grace is that she is everything. Like she brings so much of herself to this world. And if there's one thing I could plug, especially because it's so current and present on RHAP, it's that you check out The Pride Has Spoken, the podcast series that I'm working on with Grace and releasing this month. Um, there's a lot more exciting stuff coming up in terms of conversations between Evie and former Survivor players and even with some of the RHAP queer podcasters. And so check it out and um, definitely let, let Grace know and I guess let me know that you're checking it out. Um, and so Without further ado, again, just want to thank the, the RHAP team for helping this come together. And as I wrap up this outro, not an intro, but an outro, I just want to say um, next week's episode is going to be really thrilling, and I hope that you check it out. But as I say at the end of each and every one of these episodes, thank you for being a pod friend. <laughs>